Hey folks, it's Ascendants again, and welcome back to another quick guide. Today's guide will be on a very iconic challenge from the old game, the Barrows Brothers. Time for a very short history lesson. Barrows is a combat mini game that was released in May of 2005, and it provides us some of the best gear in the game. There are six brothers, Aram, Darok, Guthan, Carol, Torag, and Varak, each of whom feature their own armor sets with their own special abilities. Back in the day, the Barrows armor sets were the best in the game, or at least very close to the best, and were extremely popular due to their power and rarity. Nowadays, they have been surpassed in power by newer gear. However, they still maintain some popularity for their more niche uses, such as using Darox to train melee stats at the Nightmare Zone or to kill the Giant Mole, Varax used to kill the Calfi Queen, or combining some of their armor pieces with other sets of armor for tanking. And even if you don't need their armor, you can still make some money by killing the brothers and stealing their gear. Barrows is located in Mauritania, south of Darkmire and east of Morton, and getting there is actually pretty easy. The fastest way to get there is to use a Barrows teleport, either from the Archaea spellbook, a teletab, or someone's house portal. There are a number of other options available to use, ranging from things you unlock via quests and the achievement diary, all the way to buyables, but the most consistent and fastest way to do so is using a Barrows teleport, even if you have to spend the money on a bunch of tally tabs, you'll still make more money than you spend, so just buy them. They are only about 2.5k each, and they're practically always being sold on the Grand Exchange. Now, just like with any PVM activity, there are some requirements and recommendations for killing the brothers. First and foremost, you need to complete the Priest in Peril quest. There is no way around this, as you need to complete the quest to have access to Mauritania. It's an easy quest, so just go ahead and do it now. I'll wait if you pause the video. As for the skills you'll need, the most important thing you'll need is 43 prayer for access to all 3 protection prayers, as they make taking out the Bears brothers much easier. It is possible to tank the hits and even safe spot the melee brothers in the tunnels, but these guys can deal lots of damage really quickly, especially Darok, without protection prayers active, so I'd strongly recommend having at least 43 prayer. You'll want at least 75 magic to wield the trident of the seas. You can get away with a lower magic level, but the trident really helps when killing the four melee brothers and Carol, and uses less inventory space than traditional spells like, say, Ivan's Blast. Again, it's not absolutely required, but it is extremely useful to have 75 magic. If you're not going with the trident, I'd at least spring for the highest level magic spell you can use, or preferably Ivan's Blast if you have that unlocked. Next up, you'll want 75 range to wield the Toxa Blowpipe for Aram. This isn't needed though, and you can easily get away with the rune crossbow and broad or adamant bolts. The blowpipe is just quicker. For the tunnels, you'll want at least 70 attack to wield the Abyssal Whip to kill the skeletons and other monsters down there. The whip will kill these monsters fast, but can also easily be done with a Dragon Scimitar or something else along those lines. This isn't so important, but the higher attack and better weapons will speed up your trips. You'll also want at least about 60 strength and defense to hold your own when fighting the monsters in the tunnels. There is no exact level to shoot for here, just go for the highest level you can and any extra levels will help. The higher strength levels will allow you to kill the monsters faster, and the higher defense levels will let you tank a little more against those monsters, or if your prayer runs out when fighting the brothers. The last skill you'll want to train is agility. This isn't really that important, as it is mainly to help regenerate run energy while you're killing everything, but again, it isn't important if you're okay with walking around, it will just slow you down if you run out of energy. The wiki recommends at least 50 agility, in case you're curious. On the screen right now is the gear selection that I'd recommend for a basic Barrows run. Yes, there's a lot there, but you'll basically want three sets of combat gear for magic, range, and melee, plus food, prayer potions, and a spade, do not forget the spade, and teleports. I'll go over any alternatives for items if you don't have them or just don't want to spend money. Also keep in mind that there are many different ways to do your gear setups for Barrows. My gear setup focuses on keeping my run energy up and balancing between DPS and prayer bonus. Other setups may do damage faster or be tankier, but this setup gets me trips in around 5 minutes or so, which is fast enough for me. First up, let's go over the gear I have on every setup. I have the Helm of Nea Tiznos, a skill cape, Amulet of Fury, Rada's Blessing, Graceful Top and Bottom, and Barrow's Gloves. Most of this gear is pretty straightforward, but let's go over some alternatives. For the skill cape, you can replace it with a fire cape if you care more about the offensive bonuses over the extra prayer bonus or you can use a God Cloak if you don't have either of those available to you. The Amulet of Fury is good for all combat styles and saves a gear switch if you care about that. If you prefer, however, you can swap this out for an Occult Necklace, 
anguish, and torture for more offensive bonuses. Next up for the common gear is the torso and legs, and I just use my graceful body and legs as that helps me save run energy when I'm running around. They don't provide any defensive stats, but my protection prayers and my other gear provide enough so I don't take much damage. If you need more defensive gear, you can swap in some armor for these spots. Now for the magic setup. I use a trident of the seas, mage's book, eternal boots, and seer's ring imbued. If you don't have a trident, you can use an Ivan staff or slayer staff for Ivan's blast and slayer dart respectively. Just be aware that either of these alternatives require more inventory space for runes. If you don't have enough money for a mage's book, you can use a malediction ward which is a little cheaper, or a book of darkness from the horror of the deep quest if you have access to either of those options. Next, let's go over the range setup. Here I have a Toxic Blowpipe, Ava's Assembler, God Dehyde Boots, and Archer's Ring Imbued. If you don't have a Blowpipe, then you can use a Rune Crossbow with Adamant Bolts instead. And in either case, just use the best Ava's device that you have access to. The God Dehyde Boots can be replaced with Snakeskin Boots if you don't have them. Finally, let's go over the melee setup. I use a Whip, Dragon Defender, Dragon Boots, and Berserker Ring Imbued. If you don't have a whip, you can get by with a dragon scimitar or whatever your best DPS weapon is you have lying around. You just need your weapon to do lots of damage against monsters in the crypts. The dragon defender can be swapped out for a shield if you need more defense while in the crypts. And a good alternative is the dragon fire shield. Although if you go down this route, I'd highly recommend using the graceful body and legs so you're not weighed down so much. It goes without saying that there are many options available to you when doing barrows, and unfortunately you'll just have to go through some trial and error to find the best setup for yourself. It all depends on your preferences and priorities when it comes to DPS, defense, prayer, and weight. And what works for one person may not make another person happy. Your inventory setup will be pretty straightforward, as you'll have your gear switches, food, prayer potions to restore your prayer, a spade. If you forget a spade, you can find one inside the hut just outside the entrance, and your teleports. Now there are a few things you can do to tweak your inventory setup to suit your needs. Firstly, if you're like me and have a bear's teleport at your house, you can drop the bear's teletabs and save some money and inventory space. Also, if you need more healing, you can swap out the monkfish for sharks or manta rays. Personally, when I do bear's runs, I don't take a whole lot of damage, and when I needed food, I would take monkfish with me because they're cheap and easy to obtain. But nowadays, since I have an ornate restoration pull at my house, I don't even bring food with me and just bring a bunch of prayer potions. Honestly, that's all you can really change, as you need your gear switches and teleports and your spade. You'll just need to find the right balance between prayer potions and food for you. If I could divert your attention away for a moment, I would like to run through a quick shameless plug. If you guys haven't done so already, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can keep up to date with my latest videos. I put a lot of time and effort into these videos, and I would really appreciate it if you guys would show your support by hitting the subscribe button and hitting the like button. And that's it. I told you it was going to be quick, so let's get back to the video. Alright, now it's time for an example Barrow's run. To give you a quick overview of my runs, I start from Aram and go clockwise around from there. The main reason for this is that I really want prayer for Aram and Darok because they can hit hard and really fast, and I also like getting the ranged gear switch out of the way early on in the run. That's most of what you need to know, so let's get to it. So I'm killing Aaron first, and there are a couple more things that you need to know while killing the brothers. Firstly, while you're in the crypts and tunnels, you will get smited every 15 seconds. This is why you need some extra prayer potions, because you'll need extra prayer when you run into a brother in the tunnels, and even possibly when you're finishing up before the tunnels. You'll just need to watch your prayer while you're fighting these guys. Another thing to look out for is one of the brothers will not be found in his crypt, and instead his crypt will offer you to go down into the tunnels. It is random which brother this is, and you should ignore the tunnel until you kill the other five brothers. I'll explain why later in the reward section. So for every brother except for Carol, you'll use the usual combat triangle counter against them. For Carol, however, his magic defense is low enough that magic is usually faster than melee to kill him with. Well, there we go. There's my tunnel. I'm going to skip this for now and go to Varak first. One more thing to note is that prayer isn't very important for Varak, as he has a 25% chance to hit through prayer anyway. It does help you take less damage, so I would still use it if you have it. It's just not as important as for the other brothers. Here we go. Five of the brothers are dead, so let's go down to Torag's crypt and hit the tunnels. So now that we're down here, the idea is basically to run around, kill a few monsters, kill the last brother, and open the chest in the middle. When you first get down here, 
you'll get dropped into a corner room with only one door that's unlocked. You need to go through that door and start heading around until you find the unlocked door to the center room. This can be really close or really far. It's random where the doors lie. While you're running around in the tunnels, you should kill a couple skeletons to get the best rewards potential before opening the chest. I will go over the details for this in the rewards section, and I'll show you how you can force spawn skeletons at the end of the run. Also keep in mind any brothers you have not killed yet, including the one whose crypt you came down through, may ambush you when you go through the doors. It's less common than the other monsters, but you should keep your health up if you can so you don't get one banged when opening doors. Ah, uh, here we go. Here's our door to the center. The outer door will have a quick puzzle where you need to identify the final piece in the pattern shown. These are really easy, and if you're using rune lights, they will be highlighted for you. When you're ready for it, you can drink a prayer potion, get your gear ready, and open the chest. Out will pop the final brother if you have not killed him yet, and you just need to kill him to open the chest. And while we're here, if you haven't killed skeletons yet, you can force spawn them here. All you need to do is keep walking through one door until you get a skeleton to kill. After he is dead, you can loot the chest and reap your rewards. Well, that's kind of lame with just some coins and chaos runes, but usually you can get a lot more loot from here. Let's tally out and heal back up for another run. Before we end the video, let's go over the reward system really quick. Basically, you start with one roll on the drop table to get any item, and for every Barrow's brother you kill gives you another roll at the chest for a maximum of 7 rolls. Killing each brother also unlocks their respective armor set on the drop table, so, for example, if you don't kill Guthin, you will not have any chance to get his armor as a drop. If a Barrow's drop is rolled, then a piece is selected randomly from the brothers you have killed. If not, then it goes to the other drop table for coins, runes, and other things. This is where the reward potential comes in. Your potential is based off of the total combat level of the monsters you have killed, including the Barrow's brothers. If you're going for making money at Barrow's, the ideal range to get to is between 81% and 88% potential as that gives you the best rune drops. But then you also don't get stuck with the very worthless bolt rack drops. Killing the six brothers and two skeletons will take you right to 81%, but you can kill whichever monsters you want to get you there. You may be thinking now that if you're going for a specific bear's piece, then you would only kill the brother for that piece, and that would actually be wrong. Since killing all six brothers gives you more rolls to obtain pieces, and you could obtain multiple pieces from a set, you have a greater chance of completing a set or getting a specific piece by killing all of the brothers. You just don't have to kill the other monsters in this case, since the reward potential does not affect the chance at Barrow's pieces. There are many ways to go about the rewards table, as you can probably tell at this point, and you can find more information about the drops by following the link in the video description to the wiki page detailing all of this. So, what does all of this mean for Barrow's? Is it a good moneymaker? Is it a boss? Well, while I wouldn't consider Barrows a traditional bossing task, it does provide you an easy way to get used to some higher level PVM mechanics, like switching gear, keeping the proper prayers up, etc. If you're looking for an easy way to get into bosses, I'd recommend starting here to get your feet wet before trying more challenging things. As for a moneymaker, the wiki currently estimates about an 817k profit per hour at Barrows with 12 chests looted. Although that is considering using higher level gear and higher stats and having the Mauritania Hard Diary completed for the extra runes when looting. So your mileage may vary. For lower levels and slower chest rates, I'd say you can probably earn around 200 to 300k per hour at minimum. So it's really not too bad of a moneymaker in my opinion. But anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you liked or disliked the video, you know what to do. Feel free to leave me feedback or suggestions in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up with my latest videos, and I will catch you in the next one.